Here to discuss the evolution of the music industry, please welcome Recording Academy CEO, Harvey Mason Jr. with Atlantic staff writer, Spencer Cornhaber. Exciting, I got the microphone. You don't have a microphone, you want to? Yeah, wait, that's, that's for the music guy. Okay, yeah. I should have a headset You're gonna get so up I can do a, choreo. Yeah, or... absolutely, right? All right. <laughs> Anyways, um, thanks for having me, this is great. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, Hi everybody. This so is cool. Harvey great Mason place. Jr. Evolution of the music industry, I love it. <laughs> yeah, um, so that starts what, 5,000 years ago? Yeah, back in the drum days, people in Africa playing drums, and now we're here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you are a change maker in the music industry. Well, thank you. I take that as a compliment. Yes. Sure. You started um, as the CEO of the Recording Academy in January of 2020, which was um, a little bit of an interesting moment for the Academy. Is that, is that fair to say? You're being nice. I mean, interesting <laughs> is not the word. Yes, it was a controversial time. There was a lot of things happening, a lot of things swirling. And uh, I was actually chair of the board. Previous to that, I'd been elected about five, six months before uh, 2020 and the show in that period. And yes, we got into some, some hard times. We'll leave it at that, I guess. Well, I should probably describe a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, go for it. Uh, a few years of you know big name musicians kind of questioning whether the Academy was as inclusive as it needed to be. Um, and your predecessor had a very short and interesting reign that ended in a discrimination complaint. Um, and then you have to come in and sort of be the guy to fix everything or, or change things. Um, how did you go about that? What was the biggest challenge at the beginning? Well, there were a lot of challenges, and uh, you touched on a couple of them, but I have to say we are a 65-year-old organization, and for 63 of those years, we'd been doing incredible, incredible work. And we had been, you know, the whole mission of the Recording Academy, for those of you that don't know, we put on the Grammy show and we give away the trophies and we award excellence for music and we honor what's happening in the year of music. But we do the other 364 days of the year, we do things that help music people. We're uplifting the industry, we're giving back, we're doing education, um, advocacy, safety net for music people who need help. So that's what the Academy is really about. So when you talk about the controversy or an artist that's upset about an award, that does come, it does go, but what's consistent is the work that we've done over the last 65 years. So when I got in place, first thing I did was we looked at all the work that was being done that was really important. We figured out how do we continue to do that? How do we elevate it? How do we expand on it? But we can't do any of it unless our show is right because we get all of our revenue from our television show. We're on CBS through a Viacom partnership. We get revenue from the show. That revenue goes directly back into all the programs that we do for music people. So the show is very important. The, the perception and the relevance of who we are as a show and as an award really basically funds a lot of what we do as an organization. So we looked at uh, pretty much every part of the organization. We'd had a CEO that had been in place prior to me and prior to the one person that was there for a couple months mm -hmm. for 17 years. He did amazing work, built the organization to where it was, but a lot of the same patterns had been formed. A lot of things had happened repeatedly and gotten in a bit of a cycle. So when I came and I looked at everything, we looked at voting, we looked at membership, we looked at our staff, we looked at how we populate our committees, just how we did really everything and made changes. And I didn't do it alone. We had an incredible team, we had a great board, uh, but I like to think we've made huge strides over the last 24 months. Yeah, um, one of those things is making the Academy bigger, right? Like bringing more people into it. A little bit. We have 24,000 members, uh -huh. about 13,000 of which roughly are voting members. Uh, so one thing you all should know is our award is entirely voted on by members. To be a member, you have to be a professional in the industry. So if you're working as an engineer, a songwriter, a producer, you can apply for membership. As you're a member, you can vote. So there's no committees, there's no media, sorry. There's no uh, other way that you can win a Grammy Award unless your peers vote for you. So we haven't really expanded our membership, but what we've done is gone into areas of our membership where we were weak or where we were light. Hmm. We needed more representation in different genres. We needed more gender parity. We need other things to happen in our membership that we've really gone over and above kind of where we wanted to be and starting to push those boundaries further and further back and make those changes. And the membership is what drives everything in the Academy. All of our nominations, all of our awards, all of our uh, proposals are all driven by membership. It's not you know, me or somebody else sitting back in, a, in an ivory tower saying, oh, I like that record. It's done by our membership. So when you talk about expanding the academy, what we've really tried to do is make sure our membership is relevant and reflective of music and what's going on in culture. Right. It's sort of like a democratic body. And, exactly. And, it's, and so your, your 
goal is to actually represent who is in the music industry as a whole, whatever that means. Yeah, and our goal is to make sure that our committees are reflective, our board is reflective, our membership is reflective, people that work at the academy have to be reflective. And I've just found over the last 24 months, I think we all have found that getting more different types of people together, more different diversity, more um, representation is really resulting in better outcomes for everything we're doing, including the nominations and the Grammys, but other day-to-day -day decisions that are being made uh, just in our processes around the Academy and what we do. Yeah, so what were some of those uh, like areas of the industry that you wanted to bring in that were not as represented before? We need more women. I mean, it's very simple. We need more women. We need more people of color. Uh, we needed more genres other than pop or um, really pop was the most popular genre and most of our membership, not all of it, but most of it was leaning towards pop. So when you would see a pop artist on the ballot, they would tend to win because our membership is very, it skews very heavily towards white men in pop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm not a white man, so I came in and I said, something doesn't look right with the membership. How do we figure this out? And we just really looked at the data and we knew what the percentages were and we made changes. We went into different communities, different genres of music, and we started inviting people, said, can you join us? We need, not only just because we wanted to be diverse, I mean, that sounds a little superficial, but yeah. I really felt like the music industry is diverse. I come from the industry, I'm a songwriter, I'm a producer, so I know this industry. We had to have representation, first of all, because we can't vote on music if we don't know it. If you're a big classical artist or a composer or a conductor, you probably don't know a lot about hip hop. Right. Right? If right. you're a hip hop artist, you probably don't know the latest concerto. But having people from diverse areas, being able to evaluate music and make decisions, critical decisions based on the quality, is going to be dependent on your area of expertise. Number one. Number two, having the diversity in our membership and in our, on our staff just brought new energy, new ideas, new opinions and not the same old thinking that was happening probably for us and other companies around the world where you've gotten in a rut and you've done things the same way over and over again. You need new ideas. Yeah. Um, you mentioned hip hop, which is arguably the most popular genre in America, right? Like more not, popular than it's pop. It's not arguably. It's I mean, now like it is. 34% yeah. uh -huh. of the music is, yeah. And so what has it been like to um, kind of reflect that representation in the academy? Have you had to, how have you um, tried to bring in more of the hip hop community? It's been an effort. It's definitely been a conscious decision to say, again, looking at music, looking at the industry, we want to be reflective. And we also have to be able to evaluate that music, as I said. So we go into different areas where we think we can recruit members. And we ask them, or can you be a member? And they say, well, why should I be? And we explain to them why you should be. And I'll tell you a quick story, Spencer. There was a group. It was a gentleman that was very upset with the Academy because they didn't get a nomination. And I said, are you a member? He said, no, I'm not a member. I don't, I don't believe in it. I said, well, you might not believe in the award, but you're really mad about it, number one. But number two, come to find out somebody from his band had had an accident on the way to a tour, destroyed their instruments, and they called the Academy and said, we've lost our instruments and we have a show in two days. And we have an organization called Music Cares, which is one of our affiliates. And the whole goal of Music Cares is to be a safety net for music people, to give things when they need help. They need bills, medical attention, addiction recovery, mental health issues. This group of people called after the accident and said, we have a show in two days, we lost our instruments. Music Cares FedEx them instruments. And this is a group that works directly for the guy that was most mad at us one year. And I said, and who was that? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what you don't understand is it's OK to be mad. I'm an artist too, I'm pissed when I don't get recognition and people don't think my music good, it hurts. Mm -hmm. When we make music, it comes from the soul and from the heart. But you can't try and detract from the organization that's gonna 365 days a year lift music people and support and serve music people. And I don't know about all of you, but I think music is important. You've heard about some really important topics today, I've been listening backstage. Brilliant people up here, people that are changing the world. But I really believe music has a unique power. Music has a magical power to bring people together, to make change, to, to make a difference. And so when I see what the Academy does to help and serve music people that are making that difference, I don't believe that's something we should take light. I think that's something we should support. Well, you guys just a added um, a new award, right, for music for social change, the most socially conscious song. Like, yeah. 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 Um, what was the thinking behind adding that? And how do you think about like 
quantifying uh, social change in music? Like, so, like you're talking about protest songs, right? Like, that's yeah, songs you, that have a positive impact, social change, yeah. That award is a special merit award, so mm -hmm. it's not an official Grammy award. It's not going to be voted on by all the membership. This is an award that was established. First, you should know all of our awards, any change to our bylaws, to our governance proposals are made by our members. We don't create them. The staff doesn't make them. Members say, hey, I think it's important we honor music that's driving social change. And we say, great idea. Let's implement it. So we implemented it. This particular award is really the only award like this, where we have a blue ribbon committee of people coming together, both people from social change area, um, different activists, along with great songwriters coming together to evaluate all the songs that are submitted that year. And they'll pick one song that they feel has made an impact in social change. Well, is it a, it's about impact. It's not about like the message of the song itself. It has to have changed something. Uh, that's the goal, yes, uh -huh. to have an impact, to have a change to the music and lyrics. What's your, do you have an example from music history of uh, your favorite example of that happening? I don't have a favorite, but I'll tell you this, that music has been at the forefront of all social change. Every time there's a movement, every time there's an event, every time there's a change in spirit or in mood, the momentum is not rallied by, but sometimes amplified through music. And so I find that to be more important now than almost ever because there's so much going on. There's so much, and we've talked about it on this stage. I've heard a lot about it. Music is always just before something happens, as something's happening, and after to tell the history of what's happened. So I think there's a lot of value in, in music and social change. Mm. Um, you guys do advocacy, and we talked about hip hop before. Um, tell me about the Rap Act. Does everybody know what the Rap, that rap Act is? It's a Probably bit not. of legislation. Right now, you're finding hip hop artists are making music, if something comes into question for a prosecutor and there happens to be a trial, prosecutors are using lyrics from songs as evidence in court. And most of the time, I don't know about most of the time, but I would imagine all the time, these lyrics are imagination, creation, ways for people to express themselves, maybe feelings that they've had, maybe stories that they've experienced, or people that they've seen. But quite often in hip hop music, people are talking about things um, that are being used now in court. So there is an act that we are pushing hard to make sure it gets enacted into law, uh, starting in California and in New York uh, by Representative Johnson, who's introduced the bill uh, to prevent courts from being able to use creative works of expression as evidence in a court of law. And you can imagine, even if you're a journalist or if you're someone writing something, the idea is to let music and creativity come out and be natural. And it's, as I said, it comes from the heart comes from, from the depths of your experience in life and feelings. Writers are crazy people, we're all crazy. We write about what we feel and what's going on in our lives. And to be able to express yourself, you can't have barriers, you can't have friction. And for the legal system to be looking at artists and saying, oh, that person said this in a lyric, it's gonna totally change the mindset and the dynamic around creatives. And I don't think that's fair. I don't think any of us would believe in that or support that. So that's what we're fighting for. Yeah. Um, another big change that you did was expand the number of nominations in the major categories. And that was a kind of uh, shocking change in the music industry. It kind of came down last minute. Um, looking back on it, and this was just last year's ceremony, how do you feel about it? Are you gonna, is that a permanent change? I what feel really good about it. It was very last minute. And that's the thing about the Academy. We are not going to sit and debate things for four years or mm. 10 years or two years. When something needs to be changed, we're going to change it. We want to be very inclusive. We want to bring people together around music. We don't want to be um, isolating. We want to include all the different genres. And the opportunity to expand from 8 to 10 gave us the ability to honor more music. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anybody who can be mad about honoring more music instead of less. So it was a decision we made together as a, as a group, as a staff, as a board. Uh, and we were really pleased with it. We'll watch how it goes over the next two years. But as I said, if members think it's too many or it's too few, it'll get changed through a proposal. Well, it seems like the kind of thing that would arise in an era like right now where we have so much music coming out. Um, do you feel like, is, is your job just like bigger than it was for previous generations of um, recording academy presidents or CEOs? I don't know if it's bigger. I think music has always been a big part of our, our culture. I think right now, to your point, we are seeing so much music. It's an explosion of creativity. Do you know how many songs are released every day? Uh, uh, too many to listen to. I know that. That's all I know. <laughs> Any guesses how many songs are released in a day? 2,000, 3,000, no, 70,000 songs a day. New, new songs every day. So it's, it, new music comes out on Friday, but you divide it by seven, and that's the number. So it's a lot of darn songs. Um, 
so I do believe there's more music being consumed than ever before. I know there's more music being created than ever before. A lot of that's because of technology, uh, other things like uh, the streaming platforms and the ability to get your music out a lot easier. So I don't know if my job's any tougher. It's a lot of fun, and it's, it's, I think we're in a position to do a lot of really good work. As I said, music to me is the purest form of expression, and I think it has a magical power to it, so I'm really proud of the work the Academy's doing, and I'm happy to be able to, to be in service of great music people. Yeah. Do you hold out hope that um, you might get a Drake or The Weeknd to come back to the ceremony after they've kind of sat it out for a few years? Absolutely. I hold out hope on all things. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, that's my personality. But I, like, what would it take? I'm constantly talking to artists. Uh -huh. I talk to artists every day. I go to two or three shows a week. I, I'm... First of all, I love music, I love shows, but I also want to spread our message. I want artists to know how much we value them. I want them to know how important they are to our society and to our, you know, the culture. Uh, so I think it takes more education, more understanding, more awareness of what we do. The mm -hmm. bigger picture, zooming out from just the trophies, from just the stage. Um, and those are stories that I tell and people that I talk to all the time and I'm doing it full time. So my hope is that, you know, I want to be a home for every every person, big, small, new artist, superstar, every genre. I want them to feel like the Academy is a place for them because we are only here to serve them. Yeah. Well, um, I think that's our time. Uh, thank no, you so much. That's I know. It? I, 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 we, we'll keep talking to backstage. <laughs> and well, we have to have room for the performance too. Oh, yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, your choreo. And you'll come to the Grammys this year and you'll see for yourself how amazing it is. Fine. I'll go. All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Harvey. Thank Thanks, everybody. <laughs>